All of my Walking Dead research was useless. <laughs> yeah, when the pandemic hit, we found ourselves completely unprepared. As minimalists, we don't have a lot of stuff and we have virtually no survival gear. Yeah, so in this video, we're gonna talk about what we would have done differently and what we're going to do moving forward as we become minimalist preppers. If you're thinking about moving to Ecuador or traveling here once the travel ban is lifted, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Ring the bell, please. So you don't miss any of our future videos showing you what it's like to live here and travel here. All right, JP, minimalist prepper. Is that a thing? <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> I don't know, I guess we're gonna find out. So this all started, well, mainly because of the pandemic, but also because of our patrons on Patreon. I'll put a link up there to our Patreon community in case you're interested in joining the conversation. Uh, several of our patrons are preppers, or mm -hmm. at least people who are prepared, and they've told us that we should have been more prepared. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, they have, they're preparing, preppers in general are preparing for the end of civilization. They have thousands of pounds of food in their basement, and they have weapons and water purification systems and generators and all that kind of stuff. But as minimalists, that doesn't really appeal to us. No, well, we did have some food from our move, we, yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't a planned thing. We had yeah. extra food because we moved earlier from Cuenca than we had anticipated. Yeah, we had planned on using up all of our, or most of our food, so we yeah. didn't have so much to bring, but we moved early. And you know, we didn't have a lot of stuff. Everything we owned fit in Edwin's van, and mm -hmm. most of that was bedding. Bedding and long sleeve. Yeah, cold weather cold clothes. Cold weather clothes, which we don't need here. Yeah. So we're actually going to be getting rid of more of that stuff. Yeah, but I guess it's a good thing we didn't go through all that food because we needed yeah. it. Yeah, it turned out we did. We had a lot of rice and beans mm -hmm. on hand, probably about two months worth of supply. We generally have about that much, but we didn't have a lot of other things. We sold everything we owned almost before we moved to Ecuador. We came here with two big suitcases, isn't that right? Two? Yeah, two. But we've made a few trips back with, with and brought more some more stuff. brought some more stuff, but we just don't have a lot of stuff and we've kind of enjoyed feeling that freedom that comes with getting rid of everything you own. <laughs> yes, and that's awesome. It's great to have that flexibility. Yeah, so we're wondering, is there a happy medium yeah. here that where we can still be minimalist but also be prepared? Civilization has not ended here. <laughs> Food was a little scarce the first couple weeks of the quarantine, but that's cleared up, so we haven't had any issues finding food. Yeah, and basic services have been fine, so we haven't had any problem with our internet, electricity, or water. But like we said, we could have been better prepared. Yes. You know, we had some rice and beans, but we, as vegans, rely on fresh fruits and vegetables and restaurants for the majority of our calories. And those weren't in plentiful supply and restaurants have been closed for the most part, although they are doing some deliveries now. So we started a small garden. We did. It's been really fun and it's definitely a learning experience. Mm -hmm. Our onions have failed miserably. Yeah, but our tomatoes and our squash are looking really yes. good. But so as somebody suggested that we should have seeds, again, it's something we hadn't ever thought about. Yeah, I've never really planned on planting a garden. Right. And we recorded that video. I'll put a link right up there so you can go watch our first ever gardening video. I'm a total novice at this. I've never planted anything before. Well, and I planted stuff, but I just went to the nursery and bought seedlings, but you can't yeah. do that here. Yeah, we have no seeds and no seedlings. So we had to grow stuff from our veggie scraps. And I guess that's in a way of survival mode. I guess but, so. But we were, people have been telling us we don't have nearly enough food to survive on. Well, no, we know well, no. that. <laughs> we have a tiny little backyard with our condo. It's fully landscaped and we don't have permission from our landlord to tear it up and put in a garden. Well, and not just that, we would, I don't know how we keep Daisy out of it because the cats yeah. like to torment her and then she just runs all yeah. over the place. Mindless, like mindless barking, jumping. She wouldn't yes. pay any attention to a garden. We're just making the best out of the small yard that we have. Maybe at some point we'll move to a place with a bigger yard where we can grow more food, but we're just kind of trying to learn the basics right now. Yeah, and enjoy the process. It's mm -hmm. fun. Although it I did get really disappointed when I had to pull out yet another dead onion. onion. <laughs> <laughs> what we are gonna do is prepare a two month supply of the essentials. So like JP mentioned, the beans and rice, some canned goods, toilet paper, mm -hmm. hand sanitizer. Yeah, we have toilet paper, are you guys jealous? <laughs> Just free, a free roll of toilet paper, not even in use. Brand I don't know new. If that's See, it's still, still an even issue. attached. <laughs> but I hear that Clorox wipes are uh, really hard to come by. <laughs> yeah. We can get bleach here though, so we'll stockpile some bleach. Yeah. Anyway, basic and, hygiene stuff, things like that. And dog food. We were almost out of dog food when we 
when this whole thing started. Dog food and heartworm medication, which mm -hmm. is really important. Flea and tick and heartworm medication, you need all of those when you live on the coast of Ecuador. The next issue we had was transportation and lack thereof. The yes. buses aren't running, there's virtually no cabs. It's pretty much impossible to catch a cab here and alone due to all the driving restrictions during the pandemic. So we'd like to address that issue. Yeah, we were hoping to find bicycles, but the bicycle options have been pretty scarce. Mm -hmm. And JP had a dream, he told me about this when we first met, to learn how to ride a motorcycle, and we still haven't done it. So now we're gonna go for it. Yeah, we wanna learn how to ride motorcycles, or at least those mopeds where yeah. you, put, you can put your feet down. That's like my speed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, neither of us have ever driven one of those before. We've both ridden on the back of motorcycles, but I didn't like it. I did. Amelia did. <laughs> Something women love motorcycles for some reason. But anyway, we <laughs> want to try to find some sort of uh, transportation that's also easy for us to transport. Yeah. But we don't want the full responsibility of having a car. That's why I thought a bicycle would be great because I don't know how to work on motorcycles and bicycles don't require gas. Yeah. However, you can't go as far. So if you're in the alone Ecuador area and you want to teach us how to ride a motorcycle or a scooter, let us know. I'd like to start with a scooter, please. Yeah, a scooter would be better, I <laughs> <Yeah>. think. <laughs> The next thing we want to do is put together some go bags and or bug out bags. One of our patrons said that we should have those ready to go too. And we're going to record a whole video oh about gosh. that, but we're going to include things in that like our little water filter. Thanks, Sam and Anna. This was yours that you guys gave us. Yes, thank you so much. We have our all-in-one tool that we brought from the States. We're going to put that kind of stuff in there, matches, batteries. We're going to share mm -hmm. all that later, so stay tuned for that. And we also want to learn some basic survival skills like how to get food, water, and shelter. Yes, I guess I need to learn how to forage for mushrooms and what leaves we can eat. I don't know. Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to learn all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to learn all that, but there is a thing called the internet and it yes. still works right now. <laughs> so we better learn that before the internet goes away. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> it's not the zombie apocalypse. Not, no, it's not Walking Dead yet. No, hopefully not ever. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all we have for this video. If you have any ideas for us on how we can be minimalist preppers, let us know in the comments below and let us know what you guys are doing to be prepared. Yeah, and, that'd be great. Yeah, for, for the future pandemics or whatever else happens. Life. Yeah, whatever happens in life. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, as always, leave us a like. Yes, please. We'll see you all in our next one. Ciao. Ciao.